Welcome citizens, Chet Aries here. This is take 142 of my video on 318 voice attack macros. It's probably not that high, but it just seems like it. I'm switching to my external display so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. Look, here's the deal. Tomorrow, March 9th, CIG is probably going to release 3.18 to the live servers. It's going to be awesome. The last two days have been pretty stable, without a lot of problems uh, in the uh, PTU environment. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty excited about these changes. <clears throat> um, yeah, persistent entity streaming is going to be a big deal. Salvaging is a big deal. Pirating and anti-pirating is going to be a big deal. Very exciting. So what I am going to show you today is how to set up my new macros. There's two big things that changed in uh, 3.18 as far as my macros go. And one is inventory, very simple. They have a move all button now. All of our inventory problems are pretty much gone. But I did still keep uh, an inventory move uh, macro. You just hover the mouse over your inventory and say, uh, you know, inventory, you know, move inventory and a number. It, it doesn't matter left or right anymore. Because all it's gonna do is just shift click wherever the mouse is and it's going to move stuff over. You could just do that yourself um, pretty easily too, but there's something there, still there for you. The other really big thing that um, changed for my macros, it's not a big deal in, in 318 really, but they changed the location of everything on the nav map, right? So all this stuff, it was a real pain in the ass. Uh, all of this changed a little bit, X and Y values. So, um, I, um, going through that pain, I realized I just finally wanted to make things simpler on myself. So I created uh, a lot of variables. And while I was doing that, I also decided to uh, do the math and uh, be able to create resolution independent macros. So, my screen here is 1920 by 1080. And if your screen before was not also the same resolution for the um, for the app for Star Citizen, then none of my macros would work. But with resolution independence in my 318 macros, if you have a 16 by 9 resolution on your monitor, um, all you've got to do is just tell my macros what your resolution is and it will figure it out and it will work. I've tested this already with a bunch of people. It works great. Uh, it will also work with a little bit of extra effort on multi-monitor setups and ultra wides. Um, the, you just have to, in addition to setting up your, um, your uh, current resolution in, in, the, in the setup, you also will have to set up some X or Y offsets. Um, and some of that will, might be a little difficult. You're going to have to hunt and pack and, and figure it out a little bit, but I'll, I'll give you an example of that shortly. So, um, I'm going to clear my route. I'll demo the Crusader selection here. Ava, navigate to Crusader. Clear route. Setting route. So simple, easy peasy. It's selected Crusader. Uh, we can turn on setting here. There we go. There's Crusader. Easy peasy. Um, you could do this for every planet, every moon, uh, and almost every Lagrange point uh, station. There's one station that is ridiculous. Uh, I've documented it uh, already in the README file. Um, you'll just have to deal with it. That's all right. It, it requires zooming up uh, the mouse in about eight clicks, and it's uh, it's a wreck. Um, so we'll turn that off, and I will show you what you need to do. 
in the description of the video, there's a link to my GitHub for my Star Citizen voice attack. And there is a README. Read it. Seriously. Uh, if you don't read it, things might not work for you. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're playing in 1080, uh, in 1080p, you know, 1920 by 1080, you can just download the stuff and it's going to work because that's what I play at, play at. That's how it's configured. And uh, um, it'll just work. If you're using any other 16 by 9 resolution, you know, 1440p or 4K, then uh, you just need to change a couple settings and it'll work. So uh, first things first, these are the two files at the top. Assemble AstroProfile.vap. VAP stands for Voice Attack Profile. And this Assemble Init uh, Voice Attack Profile. <clears throat> Those are the two that you need to download. Then we're going to create new profiles and we're going to import those into it. So you can see here, here is my voice attack. I have uh, my assemble Astra profile. <clears throat> you know, to create a new profile, you just go here and do that. To import that download into there, you open the profile you want to import it to and you say import commands go to the file and import all of them. I will say, if you already have macros and you're importing them into those macros, I would back up everything. I would just export everything. Um, I'm just saying, I'm, a, I'm an IT guy. Back up your stuff before you mess with it. Um, do the same thing with assemble init. You don't have to name them this. It'll still work without it. But uh, um, that's what I that's what I have made, mine named. So open that up. You import the command, assemble in it, and you're good to go. What's the next step? You're going to uh, include commands from other profiles for your main profile. So um, this is the HCS Star Citizen profile. It's named Event Horizon for whatever they gave them all special names. Uh, you're going to open that. Um, if you don't use it, it's whatever profile you use all the time. That's the one you're going to do this with. <clears throat> Edit the profile. Go to options. Include commands from other profiles. Click the three dots. You're going to add the profiles that you just imported, the symbol Astra and the symbol in it, into this list. But wait, there's more. You're also going to go to your assemble Astra profile. This is where all the main macros for everything are. You're going to open that and you're going to do the same thing, but this time you're going to import your uh, HCS Event Horizon macros and the assemble in it. This is so that if you need to edit anything or you want to configure your own stuff in here or or whatever, you can load this macro and everything will still work pretty much the same way uh, with this one as it will it, um, if the H uh, as if the HCS macro was also loaded. So handy to do that. Uh, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to set up your AI name. Uh, if you've listened to any of my videos, you'll know that I call my AI Ava. And I'm pausing after that so that she doesn't recognize what I'm saying next. Uh, to set this up, select your main profile, which is which probably should be your HCS profile. Go to options. Cl uh, check override listening if my spoken command begins with and put the name of your AI. This is like talking to Google or Amazon or whatever. 
Um, so put something in there that's like not your kids' names and not your dog names and not anything that you use on a regular basis. I suggest something that's two syllables and easy to say. So uh, my AI name is called Ava. Uh, you do that for that profile and also do it for oops and also do it for your assemble astra profile same thing go in there options check the box type in your ai name you know call it kit like from knight rider or uh or jarvis from avengers or whatever you want Then you'll notice here that um, this not listening is set. You can actually tell it through a command to uh, just by saying stop listening and it'll set this to not listening. What it really means is that it's not listening to anything else other than the command word that you typed in. Once you say that word, then it starts listening. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to uh, edit the resolution. You're gonna you're gonna set the resolution of what you're playing at in your assemble init. So this is just a bunch of variables that get set. The very first two variables is uh, assemble new res x and assemble new res y. By default, they are set to 1920 by 1080, because that's what I use. Um, if you're using uh, 1440, then you're going to set these to uh, to 2560 by 1440, right? 2560 by 1440. So you just uh, change the value here and change the value here. Uh, as long as it is a 16 by 9 resolution, that's it. You're done. You save it. And it's going to work. If you are using a, uh, for instance, three monitors, and each monitor is 1920 by 1080, um, then you're going to also have to set an offset X value, more than likely. Um, Maybe an offset Y, but it, it it just depends. I don't since I don't have that set up, I don't know exactly how um, <clears throat> how Star Citizen is going to change the way it shows the mobile glass. But it's going to show it centered in your main monitor, and generally that means that uh, every X value that I've targeted needs to have. Uh, needs to skip over the whole left monitor and go to your middle monitor. So however big, you, however many pixels your left monitor is, that's how far it needs to go over. So if it's 1920 by 1080, then you need to set this offset X value to 1920 to get it to the middle monitor and use the mobile glass on there. Um, you may also have to set a Y value. I am not 100% sure. Again, I don't have three monitors. Um, but I'll give you another example here in a second. Um, yeah. So 380, uh, 3840 by 2160 for 4K. Any of the 16x9 resolutions. Just set it there. Uh, if you need to use the offsets... Um, for an ultra-wide monitor, for instance, um, I helped a friend get his ultra-wide monitor set up. His ultra-wide monitor was 5120 by 1440. So the middle of his monitor was a normal 16 by 9, you know, 2560 by 1440. And then there was um, 100, uh, or 1280 pixels on each side that made it ultra-wide. So we knew that we would have to do 1280 for the X offset, and that worked fine. But additionally, we found that um, for whatever reason, it does not make sense to me, but um, CIG made it so that 
we also needed to set the Y offset to 32 pixels and then everything worked fine. So, you know, give that a try. If it's not working, um, uh, I'll show you here in a second. Um, when my macros run with the resolution independence, it'll tell you the exact pixels that it is targeting. Um, so you should be able to figure out where it's targeting and where it needs to be and set your offsets. Um, you can always hop on the Discord. There's a link in the description. And, or leave me some comments if you need some help or suggestions. I'll do my best. But there's no perfect way to do this. Uh, it's going to take some trial and error. Um, the only other thing I'll tell you that is that if you decide to start from scratch and retarget everything, uh, and you want to use this system, you need to set the, uh, the assemble org res X and assemble org res Y or as an original, right? So if you just don't want to figure out these offsets or do any of that stuff, you need to set these to your actual gameplay window size um, and retarget everything. Um, the, the math requires it. Uh, I've got the math right here in the readme. So you can, you can use that to help you figure stuff out too. Uh, the rest of these things are just how um, anything that I need to reuse, I, I added in here for variables. So um, mobile class, um, locations, um, planetary locations, uh, you know, I'm, I'm reusing those planets and all the planet planetary macros and then all the moon macros because it has to double click on those planets to get to the moons so anything that anything that i know i'm going to reuse that's variable i add in here then there's only one place to change it um i use these disables uh, these are disabled targets you can still bring them up and edit them set a position Right, and grab locations on the screen and it'll change that so you can kind of see where you need to be targeting something it's just an easy way of doing that and updating st things so uh that is that's it that's all you got to do um but i will show you um the uh, macros that are in there now <clears throat> um in the symbol Astra profile here, the way this is working is I'm using these functions. There's a mouse click function, there's a mouse double click function, and there's a mouse move function. There's also a set route and a clear route. These actually use the, these other functions, right? So anything that I'm using multiple times, um, I'm, I'm, I'm adding a function, right? So I'm constantly clicking set route and clear out. So I, I made those uh, a macro. All of these um, macros will check to see if the init uh, macro has been run by checking to see if it's set your new resolution to anything. And if it hasn't, it will run the assemble init command. So you don't have to run that. Um, if you change it, though, you may need to uh, you know, to tell, to tell, um, voice attack to run the assemble init command. Um, and then you can, uh, you can see that it is setting assemble mouse X and assemble mouse Y, and then it runs the assemble mouse click function. That's all these do is say, here's your target. And then it runs the function and these functions Again, just check to make sure that assemble in it has been run and that your new resolution is set to something. Uh, and then it uh, uses the math that I spelled out in the readme and uh, figures out what your new mouse X and your new mouse Y values should be. It will write that to the screen, the voice attack screen, so you can see the uh the target that it's using the new target um and then it will 
um, you know, do the mouse click, basically. And that that's it. It's very straightforward and simple. Um, the only difference between click and double click is literally this one line, which says double click left mouse instead of click left mouse. Same with mouse move. The only difference is it's just moving the mouse um, and uh, not clicking on anything. So that is how all of this works, folks. Um, I know it was a long video, but, uh, you know, use that readme. Oh, 30K, too long. I, I, I was inactive for too long. Um, perfect timing, I guess, right? So um, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments or uh, hop on the Discord and, and I will help you if I can. Everyone have a great one. Use the macros. Enjoy. And uh, good luck to all of you with the, the server resets. Bye.